Well, good afternoon, everyone, from whatever time zone you are currently sitting in. I am Sarah Husby. I'm the executive director with Great Old Broads for Wilderness, and I am currently in Reno, Nevada. Um, it is wonderful, as I mentioned before, to see so many of you um, on this Zoom today and being interested in our 2024 Broads Conference called Wilderness and Beyond, where we're not only going to be celebrating the 35th anniversary of Broads and the 60th anniversary of the wilderness, but we're going to be taking a deep dive into what does wilderness and beyond per those protections look like in the conservation movement. I'm gonna give a moment for our staff to introduce themselves. And we're probably not gonna introduce everyone on the call because we're almost up to 30 and we had over 70 people register. And if they keep on coming, we are gonna use up the full hour meeting everyone. And as much as I wanna do that, come to the conference and you can meet me in person and we can do some coffee or a, or a little dessert together or maybe even a short hike. So Emily, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, um, then Sally and then Audrey. Hi everyone, my name is Emily. I live in central Colorado and I am one of the grassroots regional coordinators. I work with our broadbands in the Pacific Northwest region. Thank you, and Sally. Oh. And my name, name is Sally and I am the grassroots regional coordinator for the Four Corners regions. Nevada and Alaska, and I live about 45 minutes away from Emily in Colorado. Hi, sorry I interrupted you there, Sally. I'm next to Emily on the screen, so I figured, anyway. Um, my name is Audrey Glendenning. I'm the Grassroots Advocacy Manager at Great Old Broads, and I live in Missoula, Montana. Excellent. Thank you so much, Audrey, and thank you again for all of you joining us today. So let's get to the question. What is this conference or shindig or fun celebration that we are hosting? So probably about a year and a half, almost two years ago, um, when I joined Great Old Broads for Wilderness, I really had this idea of a conference where we could bring together not only our broads, because you guys are pretty great and incredible, um, but also many of our conservation partners, agency folks that we work with, elected officials, if they were wanting to come, for all of us to get together and learn. You know, we are very lucky that we have 42 broadbands around the country where we have we have opportunities for folks to connect. However, we do have broadband members and partners that we work with who aren't part of a broadband. And there might be that lonely person sitting in West Virginia and they're just like, oh my gosh, I really wish I was surrounded by like-minded people who I can share my thoughts with and be inspired by. Or it could be, um, you know, broads in a new area who is who are looking to start working on a campaign and wants to you know meet some of those partner organizations in person or it could even be you know our partner organizations who want to share with us the opportunities that they have for us to work together with them more but also to highlight some of the great work that they're doing so that's a little bit where the conference idea came from also, for those of you who don't know, one of the most influential conferences I ever went to was the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act in Albuquerque, New Mexico. This was a pretty big conference where over 650 people were there. It was a conference that changed my life in two reasons. One, conservation work that I was doing went from being a job to something I knew I was meant to do. I was sitting in a room with people who tied themselves to boulders and trees and got arrested in Washington, DC. And I knew I was meant to be that next generation. And so I always wanted to put on a conference that was gonna be that inspiring to others to know that they were making a difference so they wouldn't feel alone. Sarah, I think we're missed. Okay, I think Sarah's. And Great Old Broads for Wilderness was taped Oh, they were tabling outside the conference. And so I, I see a number two. Sorry, Sarah, we lost you there for a little bit with internet disconnect. So, I'm going to go off camera real quick. I'll try so that. So we know the first reason okay. that it was important. We missed the second. Gotcha. Thank you, Robin. Cheers, and Sally. Sarah. 
The other item that happened was there was tabling at the conference. And who was this group with this really awesome name? Great Old Broads for Wilderness. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't have to do this work alone and be one of the only women executive directors out there. Oh my gosh, I don't have to go to Washington, D.C. and others don't understand what's going on because they're, you know, it's mostly men. Um, I was really inspired by the name and talked to Rose Chilcoat. She has my business card still all the way from back then from when um, she met me. And I signed up right then and there to be a sustaining donor of broads. And so conferences, I feel, can be very powerful based on the speakers and the people who are there. And I really wanted to put on something that good and that exciting for broads to bring us all together to celebrate the greatness that we have internally amongst us that has made us such an impactful and grassroots organization over the last 35 years and to learn from others. So that's my spiel on how we got here. I am going to kick this off and over to Sally next um, to kind of share um, some information about the venue and such. So we took a scouting tour to um, look at the event, to look at the event space in Estes Park. And it was Kay, and it was Anne, and it was someone else whose name I don't know. And they went up there, and they took some really, really beautiful pictures. So I want to share with you a little bit about what they saw in the facilities and all of that. It's just gorgeous. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to share my screen now. So, so this is what this is a picture of a cabin of a uh, like. This is the mountains behind it, just gorgeous. Do you all see this? Okay, great. And then I'm gonna share some more pictures. So here's the inside of uh, Willamette, Willem Hall. Some more pictures of conferences, lovely stuff. This is the place where we're gonna be. And then more pictures here of some of the rooms that we saw really nice. It's gorgeous in the winter as well. So hopefully we'll, we'll it'll be dry and we won't have snow, but if we have snow, we have snow and it'll be great, right? We'll, we'll take advantage of the weather, however it comes, because it's October. Here's some more pictures of the insides of the rooms. Here's some pictures of the outside in the mountains. It's about 8,000 feet. So be ready for that. Um, yeah, I think we're, there's Anne right there. Yeah. Here's some more pictures, a few more pictures. Here's the inside of the dining hall. We'll be dining together. And more outside work, and I think I'm, I'm going to stop sharing. Sally, do you mind if I hop in before you pass no. it off, or do you have no. a few more words you would like to add? No, go ahead, Sarah. So, everyone, I just realized I don't think we told you where we're going. We're oh. going to YMCA of the Rockies in Estes Park, Colorado. It's October 14th through the 17th. And um, the, the, the large lodge that Sally was sharing, um, Willomi, um, is where all of our rooms are. So if you are coming to this event, you will be able to be in the large cabin in that large lodge where all of our meetings are going to take place um, during the day. We So it's a hop, skip, and a jump right to where you need to be. Our dining will be done in the large dining hall, um, and we will have set times um, that we will be able to um, eat and enjoy uh, what foods and beverages it has to share for us there. Anyone else have anything before we move on to the next item? Sarah, I actually have a question. Sure. Um, will we be the only attendees um, on the on the grounds that for those days, or will there be other guests there? There will be other guests there. YMCA of the Rockies is very large. Um, okay. 
So, however, in that lodge below me, as of right now, we are the only, we will be the only people. Um, it'll probably be slower and not as crowded as it can be at YMCA of the Rockies because it's right at the tail end of the season and, you know, prepping for snow and such. So um, the location can hold quite a lot if we were really ever to <laughs> go big. Um, but yes, thank you for asking. Great question, Robin. Anyone Never. else about? Okay, then Emily is going to, sh we're going to share the screen with Emily. And she's going to talk about the conference, the, the agenda. So I'll share my screen and then you kind of guide me through the, guide me through Emily and we'll go from there. Perfect. Thank you, Sally. And so I want to start off by saying, and Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong on my numbers, but there's something like 12 individual speakers and 14 panelists. Is that right? There are about 12 speaking sessions, yes, and 14 panelist sessions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so... I feel like that just speaks for itself in saying, um, I don't think I've ever been to a conference where there were so many panelists or like panelists to speaker ratio. And I think that that just like speaks for itself in, in the diversity of perspectives that we're trying to bring uh, to the conference and to um, the topics that we're presenting on. And uh, all of our sessions are based on our four pillars which are education advocacy stewardship and fun and of course it's all about wilderness and um, public lands and wild places um, and a little bit of background in terms of how this has all come together you know we've had different committees um, that broad staff has sat on the different committees as well as a bunch of our broads. Um, we've had a lot of input and awesome participation from broads from across the country. You're going to hear from one, I think, after me, who has been on um, our activities and stewardship committee, and she has been so incredibly helpful. Um, and this has been months and months and months in the works. I think January was probably our first planning meeting for this conference, and so um, really excited about it. Um, we're gonna just quickly look over the agenda and so monday october 14th is when everyone um will arrive to ymca of the rockies registration will open at 2 p.m and um, that will be in like the hall that we will be having all of our sessions and things uh the silent auction will open our exhibit hall will open and then um, happy hour will be from five till six. We'll have dinner from six to seven fifteen, and then we will all gather um, in the Willomi Conference Center for our welcome session. Uh, that night will be Vicki Hoover and Ralph Swain as our keynote speakers. And then on Tuesday, sorry, my dog's in here chewing on a bone. Hopefully you cannot hear it. Um, on Tuesday, October 15th, we'll start with coffee and tea in the Longs Peak Lodge and breakfast in the Aspen Dining Hall. And then we'll have like a morning kickoff session with everyone. Uh, and then we'll get into the sessions. And a lot of these sessions will have um, kind of like a part one and a part two. So you will see some themes um, from one like morning to afternoon. Um, so we'll have a federal forest planning and policy session. We'll be playing the film Damned to Extinction, which if you haven't seen it, it's an awesome film. And Steve Howley, who made the film, is going to be sitting on one of our panels. Um, we'll have a 30 by 30 panel discussion and then an out of our comfort zone, which based on the presenter, I'm going to guess that might have something to do with grazing. Uh, then later that morning, we'll have our second session for federal forest planning and policy. Um, you'll see a little bit further down, Saving Salmon and Orca, the fight to free the Snake River. That's kind of our second session for the damned um, 
to extinction movie and broads have been doing a lot of work um, to breach the lower snake river dams um, using marketing techniques and strategies to improve wilderness education i think that will be really interesting and then a uh, justice 40 panel which has to do with um, environmental justice and climate change and then Tuesday afternoon is, we're gonna have fun the whole time, but Tuesday afternoon is gonna be really fun because that's when we are going to have activities that are not sitting in a room listening to speakers, which will also be awesome. Um, but we're gonna have a lot of different activities both on the YMC grounds as well as off campus in Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, and People are welcome to go into Estes Park, of course, which is beautiful and I would recommend it. You could also do that Monday before you get there um, or Thursday afternoon. Um, but Catherine will talk more about our activities. So I'm not gonna speak too much on that, but we'll have happy hour, dinner, and then um, our evening keynote. On Tuesday is Mark Dubrois, who is um, a big river advocate. Looking at Wednesday, same routine in the morning. Um, going down to our presentations, we have a presentation about threats to bighorn in wilderness, grazing on public lands, the Endangered Species Act, and cooperative management. Looking at later that day, panels on wildlife crossings, the Good Samaritan policy, and um, alpine ecology, Colorado's 14ers. That'll be a good one. Uh, we'll have a break for lunch. And then that afternoon, cracked the future of hot dams, the future, <laughs> that's funny, the future of dams in a hot chaotic world, um, decolonizing stewardship, a balancing act, wilderness designation and tribal sovereignty, and then afternoon, the River Democracy Act, uh, Earth and its Community of Life, Mining Impacts on Public Lands, and Indigenous Cultural Identity and Healing. And that evening, we'll have a Hiking Boots Ball, which is going to be a lot of fun. We have been given the green light that we can announce that Nada Culver, who is the deputy director of the BLM, and Tracy Stone Manning, who is the director of the BLM, intend to attend um, if official federal business comes up and they have to cancel. That is their disclaimer that we must also share, um, but they fully intend to be with us and we're just gonna really keep our fingers crossed that they can, that they can be there with us. So start thinking about your outfits for the hiking boots ball. And then lastly, on Thursday, we will have a little closing ceremony and then we will have stewardship projects. And so we've got four or five different, um, pretty diverse stewardship projects that we'll be doing both in the park um, as well as on the YMCA grounds and just around the area. And so hopefully people will stick around and do those stewardship projects with us. And then you will be free to go, go upon your merry way. I guess I will just say you could stay the night before. You could get there a day early and you could stay a day late um, and you could stay at the YMCA. You just have to let them know that you're with us. Um, but yeah, with that, I will turn it over to Catherine to talk Actually, about the um, activities. Emily, before we move on to Catherine, because I know she's going to share the really exciting activities, um, and I want to give a shout out to Catherine real fast. She has really done an excellent job and has helped us out and a superstar broad um, with a lot of this planning. So thank you, Catherine. Um, with the conference and the speakers, we're also going to have morning keynote speakers. So when we gather together in the morning and we come and talk about some topics, we're going to have inspiring people to help us get the day kicked off and started also. We're just firming up who some of those individuals are right now. Um, you know, I'm excited about Tracy Stone Manning and Nada Culver, you know, as as Emily said, fingers crossed, but I, I have a, a good hunch Um 
that they will be there unless something great happens, maybe like a national monument designation or something. Um, you know, the other thing too, and I'm going to put this in the, um, chat for you all our keynote speakers that we have coming you know john leshy and mark dubois have both been huge and and vicky hoover of course um have been huge environmental activists especially for wilderness for extreme for a very long time and um you know mark if you all are not familiar with him maybe i you know I'm, i've been a lucky one to be able to cross this path and work with him um professionally Throughout my career, um, Mark is the co-founder of Friends of the River and also the International Rivers Network. And he's a world-renowned advocate for clean, free-flowing rivers and waterways. You all may have kind of noticed we have this theme going of water because water is life and water connects us all in um, so many different ways. And so I'm just going to put a little... Um, video for you all to watch later on to kind of inspire you about one of our keynote speakers. Mark really came to fame um, when he chained himself to a boulder to try to get the Stanislaus River st um, stopped from being dammed. Um, he was successful the first time. The Bureau of Reclamation um, did make some concessions. However, uh, down the line, they they kind of went forward and New Maloney's Dam is, has been built in the central Sierra region. Um, but since then, Mark has been fighting to really keep water free flowing around the country. And his words on why he chained himself to a boulder, I'm not going to do it justice, but he really said there was all these millions and millions of, of life forms there that were going to be lost because of this dam. And, and who was he, just this one additional life, to be included in the flooding of the area? So I'm going to put the video in there for you all to watch, and hopefully you can be a little inspired and, and motivated to um, join the, uh, the conference. Catherine, I'm going to let you share activities, if that seems right, Sally. One thing, Chandra, did you want to share a little bit about your panels that you're doing, that you've arranged since you're here? <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I um, wasn't able to get on earlier. And so now I'm on the spot and I don't know what how like what has been shared, what sort of information should I share? <laughs> oh, just just a little bit about the panels that you have been involved in arranging. Just sure. a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm Chandra. Hi, everybody. I'm the co-leader of the Willamette Valley Broadband in Oregon. And I'm uh, organizing two different panels. One is about a, um, a wild and scenic rivers bill called the River Democracy Act that would protect thousands of miles of rivers in Oregon and um, using it as kind of a, a case study in um, how a big picture um, protection campaign using the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act can really help contribute to the land and water conservation goals um, under 30 by 30. So um, we'll be covering the background on that bill, how it was developed, how the coalition formed, some of the tactics that it's, that, the, that that coalition has used, um, some of the politics behind it, as well as just kind of how people can use the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act um, wherever they are um, in, in protecting lands and waters. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it'll be great. We've got um, someone from Northeast Oregon who covers kind of a big region and works with tribes and in a rural area. Um, and how uh, how that's worked for them. And then uh, someone um, with the National Wild and Scenic Rivers Coalition who will also be joining me. Um, so I think that'll be really exciting. Um, and then the, the second one is about um, federal forest planning and how, like what, it, what are forest plans? What are the laws that back them up? Kind of that sort of context. And then how can people be uh, involved in um, forest planning. Um, maybe uh, we'll have some examples of efforts that are ongoing in various parts of the country and effective ways to plug in. So pretty practical for a lot of broadbands right now. So, Thank thanks, for, thanks for um, uh, noticing that I got on, Sally, and I'm excited to learn about other things about the conference too. Okay. Thank you, Shonda, for sharing. Uh, okay, Catherine, you're up. Let me share my screen. Okay. So um, as, Sa oh, good. So Sally's showing the um, conference activities page and um, I'm going to um, 
well, first, a, a real quick introduction of myself. Um, I've been a, a, abroad for a number of years, um, but haven't really been very active. But when I found out that this national conference is coming to Colorado, I live in Colorado, I live in the area. And as you've heard um, in the description of the conference, it's very much a national conference dealing with a lot of issues from a lot of places. But for the activities, we have an opportunity to kind of highlight what's important um, about Colorado, about the public lands in Colorado and protection of them and advocacy and what are some of the some of the issues that come up. So um, that's why I volunteered to, to be on this particular um, committee um, of the conference. So um, the activities, uh, we've got activities most days um, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to jump around a little bit so so I'm sorry Sally's going to go shooting around the page a little bit um, because I want to kind of uh, group them in types of activities. So um, basically, for the first day though Monday, um, most of the activities. Um, well, let me step back one more one more um, place. The activities in general kind of address three of the pillars of the great uh, old broads. Um, just plain fun for one, education and stewardship. We don't get into advocacy much in these, but I think there's gonna be opportunity for talking about advocacy related to some of the activities. Um, but we gotta concentrate on just plain fun too. Um, and most of them are free. There are a few of them that have um, some sort of a fee and that might even be just getting into the national park uh, because there's a fee for that, but I hoping that it, um, almost everyone has, has um, pa parks passes. Um, and then the other general statement is you will be able to sign up for particular um, activities because some of them are limited in number when you register uh, for the conference. So an email goes out to you after you register and that gives you the opportunity to go to the activities page and, and uh, sign up for particular things that you're interested in. Um, and you, it, you might notice too that on some of them, you can do more than one of them in, on a day, depending on the timing. Because if you see in the, in the middle column, it says what the time period for the activity is going to be. Um, so then back to, back to Monday again. So the purpose of those activities are basically to give people some options or some ideas for things to do when they arrive and they haven't either been able to check in yet or they're just wanting to find out a little bit about the area and what there is to do. Um, again, most of these are free. Some of them are um, on your own activities. Uh, some of them are guided activities. Um, the on your own activities without needing a car, because that's gonna be some people's uh, consideration, are on the YMCA grounds. And there's a number of different things. There are, there are trails to hike, there are things to see, um, there's resting to do, there's just uh, general orientation. Um, on your own with a car, uh, going to Estes Park, seeing what the, the town is like. Right now there's a lot of construction going on in the town, but they're hope, hoping to have that finished by the summer, uh, by the end of the summer, so that would be good. Um, and then also Rocky Mountain National Park if you just wanna go on your own. Um, and then there's a, uh, a couple of um, guided opportunities. Uh, one of those is from the YMCA um, because they have some fee-based activities and those are on their website. They actually do a schedule of them fairly close to the time of the um, conference or the time period that you might be there uh, because they vary from week to week, but they will indicate what YMCA uh, fee-based activities are. Um, that might be, um, exercise of some sort or um, or other activities. And then um, I'm actually uh, kind of hosting a, a boating and hiking activity in Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, in, in my spare time, I'm, I'm the president of the Rocky Mountain Canoe Club. So I'm gathering some of my friends and some of their boats and my boats. And we're gonna go up to Sprague Lake in Rocky Mountain National Park. It's a tiny little lake, but it's a beautiful lake. Um, it's not something that you want to boat on for you know hours, but who wouldn't want to um, get on a boat, either a kayak or a canoe or a stand-up paddleboard, and uh, poke around on a in a beautiful setting. So I'm going to have um, um, some of our boats, some of friends' boats, and we're going to go up there. And 
the idea would be to just come up, spend a little time on the lake, maybe do a hike around the lake because it's a it's a um, actually an ACA accessible path. And then there are also other hikes that go out from there. So you could spend hours there if you wanted. Um, again, that would be a um, an activity where you'd need a parks pass. And that would be an activity that you need a timed entry pass. Um, and uh, there's information on that on the activities page. Uh, timed entry is one of our conservation measures for the uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. And it will still be in effect for the Bear Lake Corridor, which includes um, the area of Sprague Lake. So um, those parks passes for October are available 8 a.m. September 1st. Um, I'm gonna get mine. I will um, have the boats there, um, but um, people who are interested in um, doing that activity um, can either get a parks pass early or 40% of the parks passes for that timed entry are available the night before. So the... Um, um, 31st of September, 30 days has been 30th of September. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry. The, the day before the activity, which is what the 14th, I guess, of, um, of October. So the night before. Okay. Sorry for the confusion there. Um, okay. So that's basically uh, Monday. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, there's a much wider um, variety of activities. And um, some of these are on site and some of them, again, need carpooling. Um, most of them are free, uh, except for park entry. And um, again, some of them you could do more than one activity. Um, I'm going to uh, go through a couple of the, um, or just mention a couple of the um, on site activities. And those are, for example, the, taking it from the top, the uh, grazing app tour. Um, there's also orienteering in the area, um, uh, Southeast Native American skills and crafts. Um, there are three um, different YMCA area hikes that people can do. Um, I think farther toward the bottom, there's also the Wild and Scenic uh, Film Festival that will be ongoing for part of the afternoon. Uh, and then one of the fee-based activities is an elk uh, scenic ecology tour. Um, fall, fall in Rocky Mountain National Park is a time for elk, and uh, it's a wonderful thing whether you can do it on your own in an evening or as part of the elk tour. It's a, it's a, it's it's just a <clears throat> wonderful um, local activity. Um, and then the last uh, group that I'll activities I'll talk about for Tuesday afternoon is a couple of hikes in Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, I'm leaving. I'm leading one of those, and that's in the um, Moraine Park area. Um, one of the interesting things about that is it's an area that has had forest fires. It's also an area that has been glaciated. It was an area that had a golf course in it at one point in the um, before the the park was established. So um, it has a lot of of history to it. Um, I'm going to lead that one, and then and that one is the one also that needs a timed entry for the Bear Lake Corridor. So that's a special uh, timed entry permit. The other hike, uh, a friend of mine is um, leading and it's the Gem Lake um, hike. It's a, a fairly strenuous hike. Um, I'd say the, the Moraine Park, there's um, a range of hikes that we can do in that area um, because there are a number of loops that we can do. The Gem Lake hike is to a small lake um, and it's uh, it, it's considered fairly strenuous uh, just because it goes up. And I'm told I have not done it. I've told I'm told that it um, has a lot of uh, basically stair steps. Uh, but um, uh, Laura is a, an ecologist. Um, she's a I I know her from our weeding group, um, and uh, she would she would be a delight. She has found a, a 1950s era naturalist guide to that. Um, Root, and so she's going to be um, looking at that in terms of what has changed over the last what seventy years. Um, anyway, so that ought to be uh, interesting. Um, okay, so we should go on. And Wednesday there are no activities, as as was um, stated. It's a it's a full day of of conference um, uh, panels and speakers. But on Thursday we gonna we're going to switch to stewardship activities, and again we. Um, 
develop the stewardship activities to deal with the type of areas that need stewardship in our Colorado Rocky Mountain National Park area. Um, a lot of what we have is public lands, and those might be county lands, city lands, state lands, or, or national uh, public lands um, that are surrounded by or have gateway communities. And the interplay of the federal or the public lands and the communities is, is very important. So what we have is um, a number of stewardship activities that are mostly close by the, um, the YMCA. Most of them are, are within 15, 20 minutes. They would need, uh, some of them are on the YMCA uh, grounds. Um, there's a um, conservation easement on the, y, of, on the YMCA um, uh, area and the stewardship activities will be on that. Um, one of them is uh, fire mitigation and then um, there's a, a watershed or waterway restoration project. Um, Outside the uh, YMCA lands, um, there is a private, um, and, and farthest one away is a private land um, stewardship activities at the Ecodharma Retreat Center. So the retreat center is private property and it's um, got a, his a history to it in that most of the private lands in the area that we're talking about were old mining claims. So um, 1872 Mining Act uh, allowed people to have mining claims and allowed people to patent those claims and end up with private land. So a lot of the mountain land we have um, that's private is, is based on the, the um, mining laws. Um, and we're gonna do a weeding project there. Um, it's a beautiful area that's a retreat center. They have a retreat going on. So we are actually across the road from the retreat center um, but um, it's just beautiful. And if you click on one of the, the links to that, you'll, you'll see that, um, that area um, and what it's like. And the, the drive to the area is about 45 minutes, but by October, it's going to be beautiful with the Aspen. So um, it's, um, if, if that's your, your cup of tea for stewardship, um, that's gonna be a wonderful location. Um, and then the last one I'll talk about, which is one I'm really excited about, is the McGregor Ranch um, and Museum, and uh, again, this one is um, this one is private land that is now a um, um, education and conservation center. But it was um, originally established as a ranch um, under the Homesteading Act, and um, there was grazing on the area. Uh, there still is some grazing on the area. Um, but they, but when the last member of the family died, she willed it to um, be a conservation area uh, and public access. Um, there is a museum in the in the um, house that they lived in and in in the buildings, and they are sponsoring three different uh, stewardship. Well, the potential for three different stewardship activities. So you have to kind of be willing to to take what you get based on the weather. What the, on the weather and what gets done this um, this summer. But the first is a, um, a repairing restoration project. The 2013 flood that came through a lot of our uh, front range area um, caused a lot of damage in this area um, of the ranch. The ranch itself is surrounded by, Rocky Mountain is um, not surrounded by, but is um, bordered by Rocky Mountain National Park. And even the, the Gem Lake Trail that I mentioned earlier actually starts um, on the Rocky Mountain National Park, goes through the McGregor Ranch, and then goes uh, back into the park. So it's a it's a very integrated and and important uh, combination of private and and um, public land. Um, if the riparian project has gotten far enough um, along, um, we may be doing trail maintenance instead. Um, because there are hiking trails on the, the McGregor Ranch. And if the weather in the middle of October is terrible, um, there is an indoor project. Um, there is a historic barn that they're going to do some maintenance on. So um, Broads would uh, be inside doing that. Um, and just as, a, as an aside, um, as one of the activities you do on your own, there are tours of the um, 
of the um, house building and the um, historic tours of the house and the um, the um, other outbuildings on the ranch. And I did that tour, uh, oh, about two months ago. And it's just fascinating. You get to see um, a bit of the history of the area in addition to an absolutely incre incredibly beautiful setting. Um, so I think uh, that's it as far as activities. I'm excited. I hope uh, I hope the conference it's, excites you as a whole, but I hope the activities do too. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Catherine. So before we open this up to questions, um, I know I acknowledge Catherine. I also just want to acknowledge um, all of the other broadband leaders and um, board members and members of broads, everyone who applied to be a speaker, our partners and our staff for all of their hard work putting this together. This was the first time I've helped put on a conference and I think a lot of our staff, and it was a learning experience. Let me tell you, there were things you just don't think about that keep on popping up. So um, thanks to everyone for being nimble. And I also just want to say, you know, as you're thinking about the conference, just remember the hard work people put in and, you know, just patience, grace, and um, appreciation for everyone um, involved. I need to run. However, I am leaving you all in excellent hands with Sally, Emily, Catherine, and Audrey to answer your questions. I personally, um, again, I'm really excited that you have all come today. This is awesome. I really hope that you can join us um, at YMCA of the Rockies. Not only am I looking forward to seeing you all, I'm looking forward to seeing my first moose ever. And not moose. It's elk. Sorry. Wrong animal. There are moose in Colorado also. That's why moose went to my brain. I haven't seen moose either. So maybe I'll get a moose and an elk um, in person with their bugling and rutting. Um, so Sally, uh, Emily, and Audrey, and Catherine, I'll let you take it away. And everyone, enjoy your weekends. And I'll see you later. Thanks. So Audrey is going to take it, take us from here. She's going to walk through the website and tell us some more details. Yes. So I just shared my screen. Can you see it OK? OK, awesome. So let me move this so I can see myself. Okay, um, I'll start from our main website. So I'm gonna go over really quickly just how to register, where you'll see our different transportation options and a little bit more of this, what we have online. Um, so this is our website. It's just www.gradlebroads.org. And our, you can get to this conference area of the website two ways. So the first way is there's this banner that's, um, <laughs> I like that picture, that's going by. And you can click on the Wilderness and Beyond Conference link right here, learn more and, more and register. Or you can go to our events calendar and click on it right here, Wilderness and Beyond Conference. And so everything you just saw from, other than the pictures that Sally shared, but some of them are on here, um, everything you just saw is going to be in this area of the website, the conference agenda, the activities, all of that's right here. And here's a little overview of it. Some of our sponsors, auction donors, and this is, we're gonna go here in a little bit, but first I'll show you how to register. Registration closes on September 10th and to register, you'll just click right here, register today, and it'll bring you to this registration form um, where you'll fill in some of this information. That's all my information, but I trust you guys um, with my address. And there's a little waiver, you'll click next. Let's see if it'll let me. Um, okay, and then you'll go to these questions, emergency contact, if you need an ADA room, allergies, something, some questions about elevation sickness, swimming, just some safety stuff. We're uh, taking great care to make sure everybody has a safe and fun time. So you'll answer some of these questions and then pick what kind of lodging option you prefer. 
You can have a shared room or a single room. And then if you want a shared room, you can just put your roommate preference right here in this box. You'll put your t-shirt size. And then in the next screen, a couple more questions and that's where you'll pay. I won't go there just so I don't have to fill all this out. So that's how you register, just this nice form. And then you see here, um, we have more of that information right here, registration and lodging options. So you can see it and review it before you go and register. Um, like Emily mentioned, you can absolutely book an extra night or two on either end of the conference. And this is some information on how you'll do that. You'll call the YMCA of the Rockies, tell them that you'll be with the Griddle Broads, and then you'd like to book some extra nights. And this is a really fun option if you want to do some exploring of Estes Park or enjoy some other uh, things in the area, maybe get an extra day in Rocky Mountain. You can absolutely do that. And then here is some transportation options. So the YMCA is about an hour and a half from the Denver airport. Um, and we are kind of hosting a couple of shuttle options um, to and from the conference at these specific times. And you'll get both legs of that for $50 if you're interested in that. Um, and to reserve your spot on the shuttle, if you're interested in this, you can fill out this form right here. And uh, this is where you'll select what options you're interested in. So there's a 10 a.m. airport to YMCA and a 2 p.m. airport to YMCA. And then on the return end on the 17th, there is a 10.30 a.m. return to the airport and a 2.30 a.m. return to the airport. So if you're interested in the shuttle option and you're booking flights, just keep that in mind um, as you're planning. And another thing right here on the website is some general info, safety tips about the altitude, the weather, wildlife. Like I said, we're trying to make sure everyone has a fun and safe time. So we have all that information right here for you. And I'll stop there. There's a ton of really, really great information on the website. Like I said, the agenda, the speakers, activities, all that's right here. And I encourage you to explore. If you're on the fence about joining, there's a lot you can read about here. And then go ahead and register. So I will stop sharing and turn it back to Sally. So we have completed our presentation for you and we are really excited about, about this conference. It's gonna be really, really fun. And we have some really interesting panels and people coming and it's just gonna be great. Um, what questions do you have? And you can either raise your hand or put them in the chat and we will try our best to answer them. So I'll open it up to the floor. Hi staff, just FYI, the airport code for Denver. Okay. Is now DEN changed from DIA. Okay. Oh, interesting. I'll pass that along to our yeah. staff members who work on the website. That's an interesting, good for me to know. I travel out of there a lot. Chandra. Yeah, and this is a really specific question and hopefully Catherine can help or somebody, but I was wondering about getting the um, timed entry permits for the for going into the park and like the hike, the hikes that you're leading that say it starts at a certain time, is that when we would get the timed entry to start at or how would that work? Okay. I haven't looked into it, so I don't know if like it's a, you know, a, an hour, hours block or what. Yeah, uh, yeah, the timed entry and, and right now timed entry is for the entire park, but the timed entry for most of the park ends the 14th. So 
that's why um, it, not all of the activities for going into the park require timed entry, but the timed entry for it's timed entry plus Bear Lake corridor. And um, it is, has several um, sections. So you, you can do uh, an early morning um, and then there's a noon to two, two to four, four to six. So if you uh, look at the activities page, there is actually a, a, a URL you can click on to, that gets you to the timed entry. And you just have to pay attention to whether or not you want just the general timed entry to get into the park, which you shouldn't need, or the Bear Lake timed entry, um, because that's the one that's going to still be going on until the 20th of October. And then um, they'll give you the categories and they'll also give you the categories that are already used up. So if people have already um, made all the reservations for those, they'll just be blank. They'll be blanked out basically. So you can get a sense of, of how popular it is. And it's pretty popular. I looked at September and pretty much September for Bear Lake um, corridor is full except for getting in at four o'clock in the afternoon. So um, I would encourage people who want to, whether it's with a, with a, one of the organized hikes or not, if you want to get into the park, I'd suggest going online September 1st and seeing about getting a, a, a timed entry. And once you get into the park, you can come and go. Um, I don't know why they do that, but anyway, you can, can come and go, but there is a, is a time period that you can um, enter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll so, just look into that link. Yeah. And anyone else have another question? Sally, there's a question in the chat that says, will there be a daily registration fee? And I know that we have discussed this at length and I wonder if there has been a decision. I think there is, has been a decision, and I think the decision is yes. I believe I saw it on the website. Um, register today. Um, and I, I believe the answer is yes. Although, we can confirm that when we send out our email. Let's let's just confirm that when we send out our email. Um, I'm looking to see if it's on there yet. I did see it yesterday. So um, full conference, no lodging, full com. Okay, yeah. I let's let's confirm that. I will ask and confirm that for sure, and send that information out to this group. And then is there a discount for couples? My husband who is a bro is coming from Whitney. I paid $650 for shared room. Does he have to pay the full shared room price with me? Um, I think the answer to that is yes. The That $650 also covers your registration, all your meals and just the, um, we, we don't have a way to split it between like beds and meals or uh, it's kind of just all packaged together. So um, I think the answer to that is he would have to also register for the 650. Audrey, I agree. I think you're right. And the next question, where do we find all the information that's been on the screen sharing? And so that's on our website, greatoldbroads.org. If you just go to our website on the homepage, there's kind of a, I forget what it's called, but it circles through like three different kind of little screens. And one of the screens that it circles through is the Wilderness and Beyond Conference. And you just click the link to learn more. And then that's where you have the links for like the agenda, the speakers, the activities, um, all at greatoldbroads.org. And the next question, since we won't have a car, will the conference organize ride sharing into the park? Yes.
And Audrey put a link to the conference website in the chat. Thanks, Audrey. And Catherine, you had your hand up. Yeah, just uh, actually an answer and a question, or yeah, an answer and a question. On terms of ride sharing, um, and I, I know that at least um, for folks leading hikes, we're willing to, to share. So um, we would both be at the conference and um, my vehicle can hold five people. So I'm willing to take four people um, at the conference. So I'm hoping that we will know ahead of time who is going to be um, going on a particular hike or who wants to go on a particular hike and then be able to contact those people and say, okay, does anyone else have a vehicle? And, you know, or if you don't, can you come with me? And that sort of thing. Um, so I'm hoping that that's, that works out between now and the conference. Um, and then the other, I have a question on the, the on the lodging. If one is, um, wants to sign up for a shared room, but doesn't have someone to specifically share it with, is someone um, going to pair people up? Because that's what I basically, when I registered, that's what I, that's what I said, um, because I don't have anyone in particular that, um, that I would want to, or know to share with. Yeah, so I think if you select that you want a shared room, but you don't put a roommate preference, you will get, um, assigned to someone to, to okay. share with. Good. A new friend. Yeah. Any other questions? Bondi. Hi. Um, I am not able, I'm looking on my phone and that might make the difference, but where is the the link on the website um, that had the tips? It talked about um, transportation and I'm, I'm not seeing if you scroll down on that main landing page for the conference part mm -hmm. of the website there it might be weird on the phone I can see how it would be there should be three tabs and they might just have little images um let's see one like past the donors and the auction donors there should be like a little building, a little car, and a little mountain. And on the web, on the, my computer, I'm seeing they're called registration options, transportation general info, but they're just kind of little tabs that you click on. It might be weird on the phone. I think it is weird on the phone. I will I'll look on the computer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Audrey. Yeah. Um, and yes, I would like to share with a specific person. My husband may request this on his registration. Yes. Okay. Are there any other last questions that we have? Anything burning? Very good. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It was a real treat to see your lovely faces as usual.